When we started out, we had several independent variables that we threw into the model. And at the beginning, only in, with all six of them in, all we had was uh, drug type dosage as being the only predictor, and the others not being significant predictors to the model. But as we took some of the variables out and kept some of the others, we can see that the model changes. And so certain variables become contributors um, are statistically significant and others are not. And so it's important that when you do your studies to take this into account to figure out that you may have so many variables that you want to take a look at, but you may want to take a look at them in different combinations to see which combinations they're actually um, add to the model and which combinations they do not add to the model. When we look at the APA style write-up for multiple linear regression, and here I've put up a, a template, the write-up for APA, um, the, the write-up for multiple linear regression is actually quite extensive, and the reason being is that you have to address each of the variables that you're analyzing, and many times students, um, they use the term controlling, so that I want to take a look at this dependent variable while controlling for these other three variables. The term controlling when it comes to multiple linear regression, an easy way to think about it is you're essentially controlling, say you have three variables that you're analyzing and all three are statistically significant. When you're controlling for two of the variables, you're essentially putting your hand on those two so they don't move and then you're going to address the findings of the third variable. So in controlling for variables one and two, variable number three was found to be statistically significant, and then you would go ahead and, and explain that the beta slope coefficient, the 95% confidence interval, and then also the, the level of significance that was detected, um, and then you would interpret what that uh, slope coefficient actually means to the outcome. Uh, you'd write something to the effect of for every one year increase in age, the there was a decrease in the survival of weeks by 12%. That would be the interpretation. For those dichotomous variables like gender, you wouldn't want to write that for every one unit increase in gender, survival increased by 8%. That would sound silly. But you would instead write it as, you would give all the statistical output, and then you would interpret it as, meaning that females have an 8.5% increase in weeks of survival compared to males. So it's important to um, go back into the values column of your data set to see what the numbers actually mean. So that way, when you interpret the change in the value in SPSS, you will be able to write that clearly for your reader to understand, because SPSS as I've always stated, it just understands numbers. It's not touchy-feely and doesn't understand terminology. So it's just the numbers that it looks at, where it's an increase from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4. And then you have to interpret what those actually mean based on what you have in your uh, values column.